I could, I could, I could give you some background on that. I came from a great family home. I have no complaints. I have triplet brothers. We all lived. The four of us lived in a very small room in bunk beds. So I actually grew up in a band for 16 years. We were in the same room. I had a sister who was a wonderful, brilliant girl, and uh, she was the older sister, and she played clarinet, and she was good. She wasn't amazing, but she was all right. If anything, it was sometimes like Chinese torture. So this is Montreal, Canada, going back to the 50s. And in those days, my mother used to get these Cuban records from some people. My, my uncle was downtown, and she'd play these, you know, these Latin feels and these Cuban feels. And somehow, you know, I was tapping, and I ended up with a set of bongos. And I would drive them absolutely nuts, playing bongos to all these Cuban and Latin, some Art Blakely. I mean, it was there was some wonderful music being played. I had no idea what it was, but I just played along. And it was right outside our bedroom. Our bedroom was right beside the kitchen. So my dad and mom, maybe before they went to bed, would do a little dancing, and we'd hear the, the sound. <laughs> so subconsciously, I fell into a Latin thing. And I will not be pretentious enough to say I know anything about playing right. Latin percussion. I just tried to do what I can. And then a song came out by Del Shannon called Runaway. And I must have beat through about 20 skins on bongos to run away. It was my favorite song. And I, I actually got a few slapping tickles out of it with the girls because they, they, they thought I was pretty cool. Don't forget, we're talking the 50s now. <laughs> I know. You know be, and you bump, were what, 12? I even had, like you, I had like a black and white striped sweater. I was nice. hip. <laughs> and I ran away from home because my, my mother wanted me to do something. And I took my bongos and I remember I had my sweater. I think it was about two and a half hours I lived on my own. Nice. And uh, the bottom line is, is that uh, it was a great family situation. I was always with a lot of people. It was always very social. And um, as things grew on, I just, uh, I, I played sports. I love sports. I played football, a lot of hockey. And somehow I ended up going to the Y and seeing bands. And I remember seeing a band called, uh, that was on the Ted Mack Amateur Hour way back. And they were called the Starlights. They were young kids. And they were coming to town, I forget how I heard it, because they were, I guess they came from America. They were coming to Montreal to play in this church. And downstairs in this old church, they had, I guess, this recreation room, and they had a little stage, and there I look, they wouldn't even let me in. I don't think I was old enough to even get into, you know, into the, to the dance, I don't know. A buddy of mine were looking, and I remember looking and seeing this little blonde kid, and he's playing this beautiful set of sparkle drums. And that did it. That sort of, all of a sudden I went, I wanna be that guy. I want to be on that beautiful thing called drum. You wow. Know? So that, that's what I fell in love with drums. And then I borrowed drums. I used to go see shows. And I used to, in those days, they had like soloists. There was a guy named Barry Hart. And uh, a few of my buddies that were in college at the time, I was in high school, but somehow they would dra drag their drums around, do drum solos, like Gene Krupa. Right. And they do like a half an hour. So I loved it. I used to walk around, I used to help them carry the drums. I just loved it. At one point, I was carrying this guy's drums, and, I, and he, he didn't show up. He went off, and they were on strike, and here I was on stage with the ink spots, which was oh, really geez. something. It was, I mean, there was a lot of moments in there that it had to do with the love and the passion of the drum set. And then I realized, I said to, I remember, my mom, I, remember I was going to college, and I got a bursary. And I said to my mom, do you think I could take the money and buy a drum set? Because I've been borrowing drum sets all along, making friends. I would schmooze anybody for a kit. And people didn't mind, you know, say, yeah, take the snare. And I didn't have a car, so I'd walk the snare down the block, then I'd go back and get the bass drum and walk. I remember all that. It was all right. It was fun. And uh, my mother said, yeah, you could take the... And I bought myself a beautiful brand new set of Rogers drums at Steve's Music Store. I was the first customer he had down wow. in Notre Dame in Montreal. Anyways, uh, they were beautiful. And she let me set up the drums in our living room wow. you know the living room with the plastic covers Absolutely. and the room that the kids are not allowed to go into it's simply <laughs> Ooh, for man. simply for the grown-ups i'll never forget that that's when i knew my mother loved me wow. beautiful set of rogers sitting in the middle of this very ornate chinese soprano like living room you know it was actually our living room was so Thick. I don't think we had. We lived in Montreal. We're talking thick buildings. You oh, know, really? I had. We had a, a little townhouse, and uh, I have to say, the neighbors started taking up drums. I had a buddy named Oogie Mason, huge guy, big, huge, and everybody made fun of him, but he took up drums because he wanted to play. You know, when you see a drummer, it's like ballet. It's like dance. You want to do what they're doing. 
Like football, you want to be that way. It's very, very visual. It's very sexual. It's very organic. It's, it's everything. So it wasn't, as, actually, there's about four or five drummers that came off our street. The guy that lived three blocks down below the tracks, I found out, was the drummer in, uh, and uh, the Peppermint Twist. Remember? Really? We're going to do a dance and go back to his. That's the greatest feel. Oh, and yeah, and it, it turned man. out that he was from, he lived on my street. Wow. I found this out later on. And then they had the Gene Krupa story playing at the theater. I couldn't get in because I wasn't old enough. So I, um, I finally, I don't know what I cried. I cried. I couldn't get in to see the Gene Krupa story. Hmm. I don't want to talk about it. It's too, too, too. So I'm going to start crying again. Anyways, that's the way it started. And then I started playing. And that was the, uh, let's put it this way, I was never pushed to do anything. This was kind of just falling in love with drums. And I, again, I'll say, Everywhere I went, I took my mother to buy the drums. And you know, we'd go to these drum stores and she says, how do you know what to buy? They're all so beautiful. And she was right. I have never seen a bad set of drums. They're, every drum set in its own way is beautiful. It has its own little magic. Even the old ones, the new ones. I mean, uh, antique drums are some of the most popular things now. Yeah, they are. But they're beautiful. People just have them around because they give a sense of, there's a regalness, there's a, a power. There's, it's a, drums are wonderful and you can hit them without getting arrested yeah. and getting sued. And hit them hard. You don't need guns and lawyers. You yeah. Just hit those babies and you make money. Mm -hmm.